It is the update we have all been waiting for. I actually have two updates in one video today. I think my husband fathered his best friend's children and now one of them is attracted to my daughter. I have been waiting for this, okay? <sighs> I'm scared. I previously said that I was going to do a secret DNA test and that I had on the course of action. In the end, I couldn't go through with it and now I am regretting that because the window to do so has essentially closed. I just felt like it would be out of line for me to do that to another person's child behind their back. Ethically, it was dicey. I've since consulted with my lawyer as many commenters suggested, and she advised me against doing so because no matter what the results were, it would make me look bad in a potential divorce proceeding. But I really wish I had done it anyway and just not told anyone because I really badly need to know. So do we, so do we and I still don't know for sure. Likewise, I wanted to tell Sophie in confidence, but the more I thought about it, even that seemed over the line. Like I had no right to plant such ideas in her mind about her father without even talking to him first. Understandable. So what I ended up doing was confronting Luke and Amy. This is the tea. Many comments suggested this as well. I finally told both of them that we needed to have a serious talk. It felt very counterproductive to approach just one of them because I figured they would tell the other about what happened in their own words before I could prepare my own. Smart thinking, thinking ahead. I wanted them both to hear what I had to say. Once all the kids were at school, I laid down all of my suspicions and reasons. I made it clear how much I love both of them, but a combination of clues had led me to notice similarities between Luke and Amy's children. And I didn't even list all of them in the original post. Okay, for example, Luke has been a sleepwalker in the past. So have Sophia, Tom and Adam. I said over and over how much they meant to me and how I didn't want to believe it, but the thought had crept into my mind in the past. How I had dismissed it before, but now with Tom and Sophie having crushes on each other, yeah, it became necessary to pose the question. So I asked if they had ever crossed the line, if Luke had ever been unfaithful, if there was even the slightest possibility that any of Amy's children were his. I was just trying not to cry. Well, they reacted exactly as I would have expected. Their responses were perfect and so very well rehearsed. I genuinely can't tell if it was honest emotion or powerful gaslighting. Amy was more upset than Luke, or at least more outwardly upset. She was angry, offended at the accusation. Luke just seemed heartbroken by it. Heartbroken because he was caught or heartbroken because it wasn't true? Maybe they were just acting, but I don't know. Somehow they had reasonable responses to all of the points I brought up. They asked questions I didn't really know how to answer. I had never objected to them having time alone before. Why did it suddenly bother me now? Do Amy's children really resemble Luke that much? Or are things like hair color pretty basic traits to have in common? The whole family had always treated Amy and her kids as part of our unit, and I had previously commended Luke for stepping up and being a father to Amy's kids since they didn't really have one. Why was I now saying it was a bad thing? What exactly did I want them to do? How could I think such a thing about them? Why had I waited so long to say something? Luke was more understanding than Amy. He respected my feelings, or at least he acted like he did. Amy appeared to feel more betrayed by what I said. I ended up apologizing several times and even though I'm not sure I did anything wrong. Luke also apologized for anything he done to indicate he was unfaithful. Mm, I don't know, that's screaming red flag to me. I asked Amy more pointedly, pointedly, that if not Luke, who had fathered her children? She snapped back that it was none of my business and I could tell she was in no mood to get personal or vulnerable with me after my accusations. I'm not proud to say that I lost my temper and said that after everything we had done for her and her children, such information was not a lot to ask and perhaps she owed it to us. I regretted the words as soon as I said them, but Amy shouted back that I 
had <laughs> I had never done anything for her, that it was Luke and his parents who had kept her afloat all these years, not me. She went on a longer tirade about how I had always acted superior to her, which I don't believe I did, though it's possible that I gave off that vibe unintentionally. Okay, you're just so like, this woman is a saint, I gotta say. Luke did his best to calm her down, but the room was still fraught with tension. Trust me, even my room is fraught with tension. This is a good place to hydrate for me. So cheers, I hope you're having a good day. I hope your day is better than hers. I don't know, Reddit, I just don't know. It's driving me to the edge of madness. There is a way to be certain, of course. Not certain of my husband's fidelity, but the paternity of Amy's children. So I asked Luke for my own peace of mind for the sake of our daughter and for our family unit, if he could please get a DNA test done, a paternity test. Yes, yes, yes. I went on to say that I knew he disliked and distrusted such things, but that I really needed this. I could see the pain in Luke's eyes. Maybe it was an act, but he did seem genuinely hurt that I was asking for this, that him giving me his word that he had always been faithful was not enough for me. But he very reluctantly agreed to participate in a DNA test. Unfortunately, Amy did not, and that's where we hit a roadblock. I was afraid of this, but Amy was infuriated at the whole concept and told me in no uncertain terms that I would not be getting samples of her children's DNA and basically told me to F off for asking. Several times in several variations. I mean, if it's not true, I understand that accusation would very much be like, okay, go F yourself, it's not true but I'm not convinced yet. I pressed Luke and honestly, he was a bit useless, <laughs> but probably right. He tried to convince Amy, but she wouldn't hear it. And he kind of shrugged to me when I pushed him for further support because he can't force her to get the test done. If she refuses, that's kind of a dead end. Trust me, it is. I looked into this quite a bit and consulted with my lawyer. The problem is Luke could, in theory, petition the court to demand a paternity test for Tom and the others. The issue is that to do this, he'd essentially be claiming he slept with Amy and he believes her children to be his. Ugh. That would be the version of events he would be maintaining. But Luke has staunchly insisted that nothing ever happened with Amy, that he never cheated on me. Whether or not he's being honest about this is another story, but he'd essentially have to go on record and make a claim that he isn't prepared to make. He is quite certain the children aren't hit. Quite certain the children aren't his. Mm, I would like 100%, please. And he has no intention of fighting for custody for them. So no judge is going to compel Amy to submit samples for her children's DMA. DNA. Tom is also old enough that his consent would be a factor. If he and Amy refuse to participate in the test, it's unlikely that Luke would have a case. He'd have to target one of Amy's younger children, like say one of the twins, but he doesn't want to do that. He doesn't want to take his best friend to court to prove something that in his words, he already knows isn't true. Luke is already asking me to please just let this go and trust him because pursuing this will fracture everything. And I think it's a little fractured already. And according to my lawyer, it's not realistic anyway. For Luke to establish paternity, he would need to admit to an affair in the first place and he's not doing that. And if he did, that would pretty much be all the proof I need to be certain, even if I'd need more in a court case. I pestered him further about Tom and Sophie, insisted that I didn't want them dating. Luke agreed and apparently Amy still agrees. Luke plans to have a talk with Tom and activate protective papa bear mode. Among other things, he's going to remind Tom that in a couple of months when he turns 18, him being intimate with Sophie will literally be a crime. I feel like I just didn't even piece that together in the first part of this story. But yeah, I wouldn't actually press charges against him as I know he'd never do anything against Sophie's will, but I'm not above implying the threat. Thankfully, Luke isn't either. I did ask him if he'd be open to potentially swiping a sample of Tom's DNA to do a private paternity test, but he was very hesitant about the idea. 
understandable. Like me, he viewed it as unethical. He also pointed out that if we were to do this and Amy found out, it would mean the end of our friendship with her most likely. I feel like this friendship is already a little damaged at this point. Things are, Luke believes, still in a salvageable, sal salvageable, whoa, state, where Amy and I could reconcile and become friends again. And I can see how much he wants this to happen. But if I did a DNA test on Tom behind Amy's back and she found out, I think she would hit the roof and I wouldn't entirely blame her. <laughs> well, um, yeah. Though I'd be very interested to see the results. Same, same, we want the results. Luke ended up going to see Amy and spent. Excuse me? I'm sorry, Luke ended up going to see Amy and spending the night? I know all of you are cringing and throwing up your hands. And trust me, I wasn't happy about it. Okay, well, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, I'll keep my confidence to myself. That was a very long conversation, but he was adamant that he needed to perform damage control. So they spent the night together with Luke maintaining that nothing happened. I did not sleep a wink. I kept texting him for updates. So far as I can tell, Amy will cool off, but she needs a little time. Sounds to me that your husband needs to prioritize your feelings over Amy's. But that's just me. Luke and I talked things over when he came back the next morning. It was an emotionally fulfilling conversation and we ended up agreeing to take the kids, our kids, not Amy's, which could also be Luke's kids, to visit their grandparents for a few days. It was an impromptu visit, but we've done it before, and they were delighted to have us. I really just wanted our family to spend some time together away from Amy's side of the family, so to speak. I always love getting to see my in-laws. I'll refer to them as Jim, 75 male, and Kat, 67 female. I know Reddit is famous for stories about the mother-in-law from hell, but in my life, that couldn't be further from the truth. I feel safe with them. To the point that when they took notice of how distant Luke and I were from each other, I, I finally, I finally relented and confessed my fears. Oh, I told them about my anxiety that Amy and Luke were having an affair and that Amy's children might be his. Here's where things got a little bit interesting. When I told them what I was feeling, Kat just gave Jim this pointed look and did a big, dramatic sigh. <sighs> like that. So it turns out Kat has had similar misgivings to mine and genuinely suspected over the years that Luke and Amy were closer than they'd ever admit that they had crossed a line in the past. Jim, on the other hand, simply refuses to even consider the idea. He has always insisted that Kat is just seeing things that aren't true. He maintains that Luke and Amy are like siblings and would never do such a thing. That's what every cheater says, by the way. Kat thinks his stance on this is naive and that even if she and Jim had taken Amy in and loved her like a daughter, that didn't mean Luke viewed her as a sister or that she viewed him as a brother. Good point. But Jim just continued to insist that this is what they are and had always been. I could tell that he and Kat have already had this conversation before and they kept going in circles with Kat getting exasperated. She pointed out that surrogate siblings or not, Luke and Amy were not actually brother and sister, so nothing was stopping them from being physical together if they felt a mutual attraction. At that point, Jim just sighed and walked away from the conversation. So yes, Kat had privately wondered if Amy's children were fathered by Luke, which is part of why she's always treated them as her grandchildren. What the fuck? This is crazy. I need more lip gloss, my lips are getting chapped. <laughs> Which was never something I minded, to be clear. I also don't mind that Kat never voiced these concerns to me. She had no proof. Yeah. And she saw far less of Luke and Amy's closeness in our adult lives than I did. As for the kids, they're doing all right. I don't know what Amy told her children, but I think the general consensus, the official version of events, is that Amy and I had a fight and needed a break from each other. That's what Luke and I told our children. And when pressed for more information, Luke did defend me and shut down the question saying it wasn't their business. 
I don't know if Amy kept to that version of events, but my children and her children have each other's phone numbers and social media, so they've presumably still been in contact over the last two days. Yeah. I think my kids would have kept Amy's kids in the loop on the updates, and if Amy had told them anything else significant, they would have relayed that information to my kids, not to mention two of them are dating. After all, we know Sophie and Tom are very close. Thank you. I did try and talk to Sophie about that more, but the timing was off because Sophie rejected my console and interpreted my reinforced reluctance as being attributed to my fight with Amy. She maintained that she wasn't dating Tom, to what degree that's actually true, I don't know. But she was going to remain close friends with him and while she isn't usually a disobedient child, she made it clear that she was putting her foot down on this one and to be fair, I can't really justify trying to separate them or forbid them from being friends. Okay, okay, there's a little update there. They've known each other for years. Lucas had my back on them not being allowed to date but he wouldn't have my back on them not hanging out anymore. Truth be told, they'd probably do it anyway. I wish I had a more definitive update. If anything significant happens in the next few days, I can let you guys know. I'm mostly just kicking myself for not having done the secret test, even for my own peace of mind, as now I feel like I'm locked out of the only way to get definitive proof one way or another. But, oh, I have the second update. We have it here because I could not only do one this time. There are so many, you guys, okay? I didn't expect to have another update so quickly, but after posting my first update, I did a lot of thinking about my kids. I ultimately decided that whatever else happened, I needed to warn Sophie about the situation and do so immediately. To hell with Luke and whatever that meant for him. To hell if that meant all the kids learned of the situation. She needed to be aware of what she might be getting herself into. Yes, let's not take incest or the possibility of it lightly. So I discreetly kept her out of school we went back home to our home last night and this morning. I dropped everyone off and saved Sophie for last before driving right past her school and telling her that we needed to talk. Always a frightening thing for a teenager to hear from a parent, but I was quick to establish that she was not in trouble, but she needed to know the truth about why Amy and I were fighting and why her dating Tom was out of the question. I very gently explained that because of Luke's closeness to Amy and Tom's resemblance to him, I had come to suspect that perhaps Luke and Amy were intimate at some point over the years. If that was true and there was any chance Tom's father was actually Luke, that would be a significant problem, obviously. Sophie was quiet during all of this and even after I had stopped talking and let her respond, she paused for quite a while before she finally said that we needed to get Tom and discuss this with him as well. I had no objection, so she texted him to meet with us. They're both skipping school today, but Sophie gets straight A's and this is extremely important. So I looked the other way. Tom came to meet us and Sophie had me relay what I told him as well. I apologized to him for any indication I might have given that I didn't think he was good enough for my daughter and to both of them for not telling the truth sooner. Tom and Sophie just gave each other this oddly knowing stare and read it, that's when they blew my mind. <gasps> they know, they know, they know. They think it too. Oh my God, I have goosebumps. <gasps> I have goosebumps, no! Sophie spoke first with Tom backing her up. They revealed to me that in fact, they had already known about Luke and Amy, or at least they had strongly suspected. Whoa, known or suspected, that's two different things. Apparently, Tom had overheard conversations that are questionable, as well as overhearing the sounds of sex from Amy's room, sounds he would just as soon what? Sounds he would just as soon forget, but all signs point to Amy's lover having been Luke. Tom had wondered for a very long time, and back in January, he finally voiced his fears to Sophie. She agreed with them. She could also see a strange sort of closeness between her father and his mother. They agreed that Luke was likely having an affair. 
they agreed that because of Kaylee's allergies, Luke might very well be her father. And if Kaylee was Luke's daughter, the rest of Tom's siblings could be Luke's as well. Tom could be Luke's kid himself. The math led them to the same places as me. Oh my God. If only we talked about this sooner, you guys. So Sophie and Tom came up with a little plan. As it turns out, they are not in love. They never were. <sighs> Thank the Lord. Positive update. There's no incest going on here. They're still just best friends, but they had the same instinct as me that they didn't want to blow up our entire family and social unit without more direct evidence, which Tom has been working on inquiring. And though Sophie very badly wanted to tell me the truth, she was hesitant because she knew that it would shatter me. <laughs> she had no idea I was already suffering in silence. Sophie apologized for not voicing her suspicions sooner. Honestly, we both cried and I made sure she understood that none of this was her fault and that I loved her very much. So the bottom line is, Sophie and Tom already know that they could be half siblings and aren't actually interested in being a couple. That was their idea for how to rock the boat, to force Luke and Amy to do something about this. <gasps> to force Luke and Amy to do something about the situation rather than just keep making a fool out of me. I also think it was Tom and Sophie's way of punishing them for their affair. Teenagers can be vindictive. So they concocted this idea that they wanted to date. Even flirtation I've witnessed, even inappropriate touch, all staged apparently and for the benefit of Luke, Amy, or both. Oh my God give these kids an Oscar. This was supposed to make them sweat and Sophie and Tom expected that they would jump out of their seats to forbid it from happening. When I was the only one who did it instead, that kind of threw the kids for a loop. They couldn't understand why I cared more than the actual cheaters. They began to suspect that maybe I knew. Tom confronting me that one time about why can't I date Sophie was him trying to gauge if I knew or not. Maybe I shouldn't be surprised. Sophie and Tom have always been close friends and confided in each other. Maybe I should be a little more concerned at how sneaky they've been, but honestly, I'm just so relieved that they're not dating. We all are. Sure, they could be lying to throw off the scent, I guess, but they apparently already knew that they're likely related. They didn't blink at all when I told them. We even had a bit of a laugh together when Tom mentioned how he'd been a little offended that I was so against him dating my daughter before. I kind of jokingly asked him, so you don't think she's gorgeous? And, and Tom, bless his heart, shrugged it off. She is, but so is my English teacher and I'm not asking her out either. <laughs> Fair point. Either way, the question now is where to go from here? We have to figure that out. I would say that it's such relief to have told Sophie and I feel like an elephant has taken off its feet from my chest. Having her in my corner and Tom in my corner as well means a lot to me. And even though I basically just got it absolutely confirmed that Luke is sleeping with Amy, I kind of already knew that anyway. So now it's just a question of how to proceed. Tom has already volunteered to submit his DNA <clears throat> so that I can compare it to Luke's and both he and Sophie advise me not to tell Luke and Amy when I do this, which I agree with. We have the secret DNA test coming. They're both completely on my side, which means more to me than I can ever express to them. Tom has also been trying to set up a camera in Amy's room to catch her and Luke in the act. I don't know if we want to see that. Kids, I don't know if we want to see that. Sophie told me flat out I needed to divorce her dad and hearing that from my own daughter made it clearer than it's ever been. She's right. I was not prepared and will not be prepared for the next update, but just know it's coming. Let me know your thoughts. Stay classy, stay sassy. I'll see you tomorrow.